Director, welcome to the Web Comics panel. Yeah. You've Monday. got a whole day. No, it's still Sunday. No, it's still Sunday. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> so, what more do you want? Monday. You want it to be Monday. Yeah. Huh? No, I want like twelve hours sleep. That's what I really want. Sorry. Hi. Hello. Hi. Why don't we introduce ourselves, starting on the end with Adam? Way over here. Uh, I am Adam Withers, one half of the husband and wife duo Comfort and Adam Comfort. The late comfort love will be joining us oh God, don't shortly. Do that. Don't do that. As, uh, the late comfort. Somebody had to hold down the table, or it would have run away. She's coming. Uh, provided her sense of direction gets her to us properly. Uh, we are the co-creators of the Uniques and Rainbow in the Dark, a pair of long-form web-released comic series. Uh, we've been self-publishing since 2009 full-time, and show no signs of slowing down. Uh, my name is John Macho. I'm creator of Accidental Centaurs and uh, currently doing a uh, spin off from the classic uh, comic strip Nancy called Random Acts of Nancy. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, your checks on the mail. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm, I'm collecting for a charity also, the Human Fund, money for people. See, no Seinfeld watchers in here. <laughs> Boy, I'm getting old. Anyway, um, there's the alternative. <laughs> So. Oh, you. Uh, my name is Jenny Breeden. I produce, I draw uh, satanic pornography. <laughs> no, I'm actually lying uh, a lot, uh, a little ish. Uh, but my comic is called The Devil's Panties, and The Devil's Panties is actually a journal comic that my mom reads. <laughs> and uh, it's it's PG-13 due to harsh language because it's about my life and Dragon Con and all of that. I have a side, and, and Jesus and the devil show up and smoke pot. So it's only a little bit satanic. So then I started another comic called Id over on Sophie Pigments. And that is porn, but it doesn't have any Satan in it because he's more of a producer than an actor. <laughs> um, so no, I do not have any satanic porn. Um, so that leaves one more comic for you to create. Well, no, I'm just going to have it wearing little horns and Ego oh, okay. going, what's with it? And she's like, it's an inside joke. It's okay. <laughs> um, so I, mine is a gag a day comic. Mine is you jump in anywhere and the punchline is on the fourth panel and that's all you need to know. There's no plot or character development, or, you know, uh, and it posts every day. And we do have kids in here. Kids! Hi, Jenny. Hi. Good seeing you. So, oh, from, yeah, from now on, certain words will be substituted with fluffy bunny. <laughs> And I'm Bill Holbrook, I do Kevin and Kel, which debuted on September 4th, 1995, so that was... Uh, it's a celebrating its 21st birthday, so it's out getting drunk right now. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And um, do we have questions from the audience? Well, it was nice all came. <laughs> We're going to get to her, but I have a quick question for the audience. Um, how many people here want to do a webcomic? You poor, dumb, fluffy bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> how many people here are doing a webcomic? Wow. Well, oh, yeah. Well, well done. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, have you been doing a webcomic for a year? <laughs> oh, really? More than a year? No, I don't. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, well done. Yes, no, Just, stick with it. Okay. Yeah. No, I know the guy. No, I don't feel sorry for him. Um, so, so, we had a question. Uh, yeah, I think it's as good as anything. Well, hold on, microphone's coming. Oh, oh that's nice. Uh, well, allegedly. Coming. Which end do you. Yeah, the, the, the thing is at the top. Not on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> technical difficulties. This is the technical box. <laughs> what part of the box makes the box box? Yeah. There we go. All the comments I can't say out loud about 
Okay, great. There we go. Yay. Yay. So I feel this is as good of a question as any to start with. Um, Web comics are sort of a micromedia in that they aren't long form. So do you think it's important for someone who's doing a web comic and maybe releasing like an issue a week? To make sure that each one of their, even if it's plot driven, to make sure each one of their pieces of media can be enjoyed as a solo piece. Well, speaking of someone who who is not following this rule, it's important to update uh, frequently and regularly. A regular update will, a uh, lack of one will kill you because it has me. Um, yeah, you've got to you've got to establish you've got to get into someone's habit. And you've got to get into the habit of being able to be part of someone's habit. So they know if if it's Friday, the strip goes up, or whatever day you pick. So even uh, whatever the frequency you pick, stick with it. So yes, absolutely. And as far as standalone is concerned, or be part of the continuity, that's totally up to you. Um, everyone has a different answer. Um, I kind of mix things up between continuities and a week of standalone gags. I try not to have too much background needed for the reader to appreciate the material. Uh, I try to have an exposition as possible without killing the joke. Um, it just depends on each person's um, vision of how they want to do the strip. Something to keep in mind. Uh the difference between uh, print media and web comics is that in an uh, action manga novel, there can be a fight scene that goes on for a chapter, two chapters, maybe a book that's a little pushing it, <laughs> but, but you can have page after page of just fighting with no dialogue or anything, and the person can flip through it and get to the dialogue. If you're doing a web comic that's daily or weekly, if you have a 10 page long fight, that's over two months if you're doing a weekly comic. You, you kind of have to get, to get to the point. You could have maybe two or three days where you posted a comic a day of a fight scene, but then you got to actually get to some sort of speaking more. So, so yeah, you do have to pay attention to pacing um, and what kind of, um, how much information you give the reader for each day. Now, once you go to print the book, yeah, you can you can slide a couple more, more uh, pages in there. Um, now, Comfort and I come at this from a completely different angle, um, being as we release chapters at a time. And for us, it is all about the long form. It is all about getting people engrossed in the story, and that is what brings them back and back and back. So I think that the most important thing to take from this is you have to know your format. You have to know what kind of comic you're trying to produce, what kind of readers you're trying to attract, and how to keep those readers interested over and over again so that if you have a longer lapse between your releases, regular as they may or may not be, they'll be there. Um, something that the creator of Dresden Kodak said that has stuck with me for a long time was, if you have to be late, be late, but always, always, always be good. Because people will remember you if it's amazing, but if you're always on time and just okay, they don't feel the need to come back. So you have to find that balance of timeliness and high quality that's going to keep the audience interested, whatever kind of format of release schedule you're looking to produce. I'm gonna go ahead and contradict some of what you said. Now, okay, everybody figures out how to do it their own way. That has worked. That is definitely something to live by and, and achieve. Um, I go ahead and go for quantity over quality. <laughs> I have had my brother come up to me and he goes, you know what, I don't identify with your comic. I am not a young college girl. I don't, I don't find it funny because I just don't identify with it. And he came back a year later and he goes, yeah, I don't think it's funny, but you post every day, so there's something different. Whenever I go there, I know there's going to be something different, so I still check it every day. The habit. Well, and then what, what drives me up the wall, which I think every, everybody has experienced as an artist, is that you put your soul into something that you think is amazing, and you post it, and it's crickets. And then 
I may have gone to a bachelorette party and gotten drunk and forgot to do a post, and so I took a Sharpie and kind of wrote on an envelope, <laughs> I'm drunk, <laughs> and kind of posted that, and people were like, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, and it can get discouraging because you, you know, I've posted things that I thought were throwaways and people, it struck a chord and people loved it. Um, and then I've posted stuff that I thought had hit all the buttons and I totally missed the mark. Um, so I mean, it's, it's a learning curve. You learn as you go, you learn. And I never, I never wrote for an audience, I've had people say, who's your target audience? And I had a convention where I had 16-year-old girls come up and you know say, oh, this is totally me. I had housewives, I had bikers. I had a football player walk up and go, I love your comic. It, me and all my dance troupe thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> so, so I had no idea what my target audience was because it's the internet and they eventually found me, but it is very difficult for me to try to look for advertising places, because I don't know where to put it. Yeah, some of the best web, com well, some of the most lucrative web comics were gamer comics, uh, Penny Arcade PvP, because they had a built-in advertising base. Advertisers knew that this is how to reach gamers. And when you have a focused strip on a specific audience, advertisers love that. If you're doing a general interest strip that has a large range of ideas and issues, it's just whatever comes into our head at the time, that's hard to advertise for. Um, there's, there's no one demographic that's being tried, being tried to reach there as far as the advertisers are concerned. I have a question for the audience. Would you like us to talk a little bit about how to draw the comic and post it on the internet? Or ha if you've already got your comic posted on the internet and drawn advertising or merchandising or how to make money out of it, which I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah, that's going to be a short panel. Yeah. Yeah. Do, we don't talk about, yeah. do we talk about the stuff we all know how to do or the stuff nobody knows how to do? <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, I didn't know how far along people were in yeah, the oh process yeah, no, of it's, it's good to know. drawing it or posting it. or And I phrased that poorly because <laughs> now everyone's like, well, well, I know what you, yeah. Um, okay, so number one, uh, do you want us to talk about making and posting the comic? Yes. yes. Okay, how, how about, okay, because I mean, we, we can go on. Sure? Let's do all of it. Let's do all of it. How, how do you make Sharpen a pencil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it starts with sharpening a pencil. Uh, you no, still um, use a pencil? Actually, we don't. Starting this year, we don't. Um, we've gone full digital for the first time. So, um, we make comics, Comfort and I make comics. Um, while our collaboration is unusual, we write everything together, we draw everything together, color together, letter together, and self-publish together. Um, the actual production style is very similar to traditional comics. Um, we work full pages, we work full scripts, we work you know, full chapters at a time with the ultimate goal knowing that this is going into print, knowing eventually we want this in comic stores. We tried to, in the beginning, plan for what that eventual end goal was going to look like. And in order to make sure that we could attract both the audience on the web that we were trying to draw in, uh, and be able to be attractive on the newsstand with a bunch of other graphic novels in the long run, we tried to find what we thought would be uh, the best answer to both, and that was to treat web comics more like traditional comics that release digitally more frequently and to a different degree of craftsmanship. So it's uh, full script writing, draw it a page at a time. Um, it's very assembly line-like, honestly. <laughs> Um, I do some digitally, and I do some uh, traditionally. Uh, I, I go back and forth between which is better because I've got a teeny tiny little Cintiq in it, and I get tired of it every now and then. Um, 
but I, it, for me, it starts with the script, and the script is basically I, I'll, I'll write out an outline of what the story is going to be, and then I'll basically do my script in uh, in layout form. I don't write a screenplay style script. I I lay it out, lay out how the panels are going to lay out, while the the, the, the the composition of each shot, um, and then then go f to basically transfer that to paper or to uh, uh, in Clip Studio Pro, which is what I use uh, to draw in, um, and then you know the digitally finish it up from there. I'll then export it. When I post, I post a single pay a full comic page, um, and um, then. I'll, at the end of it, I'll, I'll bundle it all up into a book or to a comic book, send that off to, uh, uh, I use a printer called Greco, which is up in, up in Michigan, they do a, an amazing job, and quick turnaround too. Um, and, um, and then bring them out here for uh, nobody to buy. Boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> buy his stuff. <laughs> and, that, and that's, and, and then I'll do uh, digital versions. I have, uh, I'll do a, a Kindle version. I have a Kindle, uh, Kindle digital publishing account. Uh, I do a PDF version that I sell directly on my website, um, and, uh, and an ebook version that I really don't really sell because nobody reads comics on ebooks. <laughs> so that's it. This one's going to take a while. No, 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 no. That, that, it's just one word each. Sorry, I was. Oh wow, she's got no, notes. No, no, it's, it's him. Um, I already said that. Um, so I start with a piece of copy paper and I will take a pen and I will do a stick figure comic of an idea and I'll just write it out and I'll do three comics per page and I'll try to do about six comics sitting in a coffee shop wherever and some of them at one point I just was drawing stick figures and I had one stick figure holding a square that said butts <laughs> And then I got into idea about censorship. So I mean, stream of consciousness, just kind of getting getting a thought out into a physical, because you'll be amazed at kind of what congeals. And then I'll hand those pages to my husband and I'll say, hey honey, what's funny? <laughs> and he'll read through it and he'll do a check or an X or a squiggle. And he'll be like, I, I don't understand what you're saying here because if you hand your comic strip to somebody else and you can't say, well, this is somebody who's running through a doorway. They're like, I don't see the door, I don't know what's going on. And if you can explain it and if you can illustrate it as a stick figure, then you've communicated it, you're good. And then I will, he'll, he'll mark which ones are good or we'll try to figure out a better punchline and then I will uh, write it, I'll sketch it out on, again, just, uh, eight and a half by 11. I'll actually put three uh, strips on one page, so they're actually eight inches wide, and I will pencil the comic eight inches wide, and so I can do it in like 20 minutes. I will scan both of those in, and I will save them in files at high resolutions, and then later I will post those sketches and stick figures on Patreon behind a paywall. People actually like the stick figures more, and that pisses me off. <laughs> They're like, oh my god, the facial expressions are better than your final. Which <laughs> <laughs> you sweat over. Yeah. So I will scan them in. I will use Photoshop for lettering and layout. I will use uh, Manga Studios for inking. I've got templates to just kind of get it done faster. It takes me about three hours to do a full comic. Um, I will use Comic Press to post it online. I will archive it at 600 dpi, black and white, and I will post it at 72 dpi. I didn't know this the first year that I did a comic, and so when I went to print, I had to redraw a year's worth of comic strips. Oh, no. <laughs> Took me a while. Um, I use Comic Press to post it because they have an automatic posting system. Every, pretty much everyone's using them, so you can look at other websites and see how you like the layout, layout and set it up. Um, I have bought the URL and I have a, a website that has advertising and then I take the comic and I will aggregate it to Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr 
and I will link all of them back. Uh, I'll write the URL on the comic strip itself. So if somebody shares the comic strip on on uh, Tumblr, you can still find the original website where I can get advertising revenue. Um, I will then I will then kind of do a teaser on Instagram. I will try to do some sort of Snapchat thing. I'm trying to learn Snapchat. Whatever the kids are using. The <laughs> sharing, 24 hours. Filters. Um, and then later on in the day, I will actually go, I have a Devil's Panties Twitter account and a Jenny Breeden Twitter account. Sometimes I will share my own comic on Twitter, and then that gets more people to the website itself. It's a very bizarre social media. I had somebody come up and go, oh yeah, I read you every day on Facebook. And I'm like, yeah. I don't get advertising. Um, and then uh, I use Project Wonderful for advertising sometimes. Um, look up Patreon and Kickstarter for, for money. Yeah. One quick question. You said you do your writing in coffee shops. Where do you find a coffee shop in Portland? <laughs> <laughs> well, what you need is the, is the slow roaster beans, and you have to get the growler of the brewery that's next door and make sure that they have the airport carpings, carpeting down in front because then you know it's an authentic oak. Oh, Wait, no, I can't tell you about that one. Love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, I mean, me, I basically sit in my basement for four or five hours with a legal pad, and somehow at the end of that time, I have some jokes written on paper. Um, I will show them to my wife, who grades them with a one, which means it's usable, or a two, which means don't use this. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that's a process that we can't describe any further because I don't understand it myself. Um, but I can't understand what happens next, which is me actually doing the creation of the drawings, which first I start with the lettering, which I do by hand still. Um, I don't use a font. I just letter by hand, as I've always done, because I'm still writing as I letter. And when I finish lettering, I know how much room I have left on the page for the artwork. And I then put my piece of paper on top of my original pencil sketch and ink over that, tracing, as they say so very often and then scan that at 600 dpi into photoshop and then clean that up so i have a camera ready piece of artwork which i then send to terrence and isabel marks who are very talented web comics in their own right who do the coloring on kevin and kel after that it's uploaded to the kevin and kel site for my few readers to see they um I keep about a two-month schedule, so I'm writing now around Halloween. Um, people all ask me, how do you keep a buffer? Well, I started out with a two-month schedule, and I've just kept it ever since. Since 1984? Pretty much. <laughs> what, one, one important thing that was mentioned, I didn't mention in mine, was when, I, when I do my script, I send it off to some people for them to, to get feedback. Feedback on whatever you're working on is vital because you don't see the problems you uh, especially in the first draft you may you may get this and you think Shakespeare couldn't have written this and then it comes back and they say Ed Wood couldn't have written this <laughs> and 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 it'll help you find and, and help you refine if you're doing jokes it'll help you refine your jokes find out what's funny what's not it'll help you refine your story tighten it up find the plot holes and you say this what happened to uh, why did you leave Barb out there to die <laughs> you know that sort of thing and it'll, it'll help you to to find those holes that you don't see because you're so close to it and that is a that is a very very important part of uh, of writing writing is, a, is is both individual and collaborative both even comfort and I who collaborate on all of our scripts still use a robust editorial system because the two of us talk together about our stories so much we develop our own language for what these stories are about and we don't know how well we're communicating those ideas until somebody else has read the script and told us if they can understand any of it or not. And sometimes our editors tell us, you know, 
We don't know what we're talking about. For Because of our editors, we did go back in to say Rainbow in the Dark, which is one of our series, and we made the last issue, instead of 32 pages long, it turned into 68 pages long because we love our stories, but we hate ourselves. And our editors know what they're talking about. Actually, in college, and I was supposed to do a self-portrait for a painting class, and I, I couldn't, something was wrong, and I couldn't tell what it was. So I brought it out to the living room to my housemates, and I said, hey, I can't figure out what's wrong with this painting. I've been working on it for like 12 hours. And, and my roommates kind of look at me and look at the painting and go, you forgot to draw your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't notice. <laughs> Kathy Geiswhite had that same experience for about 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Act. Any questions? Uh, so, what would you say the biggest difference between drawing and writing comics in a digital, digital format is between that and print media? And how do you use that difference or play with it in making web comics? Uh, well, um, actually I do draw for print also. And um, I've been doing On the Fast Track and Safe Havens when I created Kevin and Kel. But the reason, one of the reasons I started doing Kevin and Kel to take advantage of the online medium was that they had the existence of archives. And you can't do a long story on a newspaper strip because the newspaper is gone the next day. Readers miss the day, they lose a thread in the story, they can't go back and see what happened. But in online, you have archives that can stretch back years. And therefore, you don't you never lose the reader. You can do longer, more complicated stories, and that's why I, could write, I created Kevin and Kel in the first place, for that very reason. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Uh, if you're doing your own stories and stuff like that, you're gonna be making them, if you're smart, for both print and digital. And here's why. You like money. <laughs> so, and because you like money, you wanna sell these things in whatever format possible. So you're looking for something that's a happy marriage of the two, like once upon a time when computer screens were just square, you'd have to do things to accommodate that. But since our computer screens, our tablets or whatever, can be about any size they need to be, you need to look at what other print options versus your online options you have and marry those two in something that's awesome for both media. But I would like to reiterate, um what you were saying about the digital, the web means people can find anything, anytime. Sure. And that creates problems you might not think about. Um, we are currently in the process of releasing an extended director's cut of our series, The Uniques. Which originally released in 2008 when we first started doing this. And when we knew nothing about what the hell we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mistakes were made. And after we had left Uniques to do Rainbow in the Dark, we decided we wanted to come back and continue the story. But the problem was, Rainbow got a lot of attention, got a very wide release. It was all over the place, you know, award nominations, crazy, like, woo, stuff. People knew us for Rainbow in the Dark first and foremost. And if we started doing more Uniques, people would be like, well, I'm going to start at number one. And they can because it's out there, because everything's out there forever online. And they would go back to our 2008 work, not realizing in their heads that it was 2008 work, and say, well, why is their second thing not as good as their first thing? Even though it was our first thing, they don't know. So in order to get people along the ride for the story of Uniques, we had to go back to those first things that we had done so long ago and lift them up to a level of production quality that matches what we're doing now. Extending them, making them worth it, so that when people start at number one, which they're going to do regardless, they'll want to continue on until they get to the best stuff. But I've got a friend who, uh, he, yeah, a, a, a year later, his work had gotten better. And so he went back and he redid the first chapter and then caught up. And then the second year, his work got better. True. He hasn't gone beyond the first chapter yes. in 10 years. Yeah, you've got because to he on. keeps going back 
and redoing. Art, the, the art is never finished, only abandoned. Right. The point is not to redo until it's perfect. The point is people are going to find your bad stuff no matter what you think. If, so be ready in the beginning. Don't be George Lucas. No. <laughs> don't keep special editioning forever, but do think about when you're getting started, don't rush yourself. Take your time to make it good before you start releasing it to the public. Make sure that your first step out the door is the best step you can make so you don't have to look back later. Or at least you can forgive yourself for not looking back later. So the, the quick comment about uh, printing. Um, I messed up and didn't think about a printed book. And um, now I the cheapest printing and the most common I, I use Create Space to print my books. Uh, they're print on demand, it's Amazon, and if you use a standard book size, then they can make that book available in libraries and bookstores, and you upload your file, and they go, well, okay, the sizing's off, and fix this and this, and you fix that, that, and they go, okay, that's good, it's, it's printable, you get a proof for $3, you go, okay, that looks good, change it, and then they go, okay, it's done, you press on, and that day, it's available for Barnes & Noble to order. But only if it's in a standard book size. A graphic novel, according to Amazon, is not a standard book size. So, go do a Google search and check for, I want to say the, Those services are really aimed more at people who are publishing a novel. They're really mm -hmm. aimed at, at text. Because uh, CreateSpace, there's like a a uh, limit to the size of the file, maximum file size, yeah, we which we don't have. We, uh, I use Lulu. Lulu doesn't have a uh, maximum right. file size. Uh, I would love to use Create Space, but if you're doing stuff in color, you know, yeah. you, you, you're you're going to hit that uh, that very very quickly, um, which is why, unfortunately, my color books are like forty dollars a piece because it's print on demand. Your stuff being in black and white, you can you can. Scooch under that that that. Edge. I tried doing color for a while and it was terrible. Um, but I would I would save a color file and I would then I would also save a black yeah. white file so I could print. Um, just as a quick thing for uh, color and stuff like that, uh, we're talking about print on demand versus offset printing. There's two different things there. So print on demand is uh, great and it's awesome for you guys starting out. That means that. Print on demand, very affordable, but everything costs the same cost. So I could right. get a thousand yeah. or. Yeah, um, when you go to a full offset printer, that's the giant machines right. that fill up this whole room and they run off thousands of pages at a time. And the more you print, the cheaper it gets. You're getting economy of scale. Is exactly. What it but because if you ask one of those guys to print you like 20 copies, it's going to cost a fortune to spur all that machine up just for a handful of copies. So if you if you want to eventually be selling through Diamond, which is the one place that sells through comic shops and stuff like that, you really do need to look into an offset run. But you got to get yourself there. Just as a quick thing, it may cost me a lot to do, say, one omnibus of Rainbow in the Dark through print on demand, and that's like thirty-five dollars. But if I do an offset run of it. It's five dollars each, but I do have to spend ten thousand dollars to do that print run. So you got to know that you can sell thousands of copies before you do the big stuff, and you have a place to put thousands yes. of copies. Yes, exactly. Yeah, big yeah. basement, barn. So otherwise, it becomes furniture. Okay. <laughs> now, now I actually am in Diamond, and I use CreateSpace. So, and and the good thing about that is. That Okay, we're getting off topic though. We're talking about web comics. No, no, no. We're, to, that's, we we're talking to, to about printing. all the nitty gritty stuff. Stop, stop talking about printing. Let's go back to because, okay, so if we were in the beginning, we actually had a question. Yeah. Um, this is actually about the beginning of how to start a comic. Um, in the beginning, starting a web comic, I know you guys probably started with different. Uh, uh, I know you guys probably started with, uh, with different programs than you're using now because there's different ones available. Well, what programs and what mediums would you recommend for someone starting a webcomic? Manga Studio. Manga Studio is the best for digital drawing that we've found. It's called Clip Studio Clip Paint, Paint now. Which is a terrible, terrible name. name. But it's an awesome but that, program. That's, that's actually the Japanese name. Yeah. yeah. It's not good. Yeah. There, there is programs that can make uh, your own font. Yes, this is true. Uh, and, and they're cheap now. Yeah. Um, There's actually online services where you just go yeah. on it and they'll... they'll what? What are they? I forget. My, my husband found it for me. <laughs> yeah. So for drawing, Clip Studio for 
fun. For Great. color, we still like Photoshop. A lot of people like Paint Tool Side to speak really well for that. Color is an evening playing field right now. There's a lot of people getting involved in the digital color game, doing a pretty good job of it. Uh, we used to say Photoshop or bust, but at this point, that's not really the case anymore. Um, we still like it because that's what we learned and we know a lot of tricks that way, but if you have another program that's working for you, then it's working for you. Use yep. that. Yeah. Um, I, I use Photoshop because I've been using Photoshop since version 2.5 before it had layers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I still have old sweats from that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it was under Windows 3. Oh man! Oh, my. Uh, yeah, yeah. You kids, <laughs> manga studio. Uh, we we didn't have layers, and we liked it that way. Uh, uh, <laughs> nobody liked it that way. There was that's, no that's why they added that. That's why they added layers. There was no undo. There was, there was no. <laughs> We had to start over from scratch, and we were happy to do it. <laughs> no, um, uh, I've been using Photoshop since then. I've started using Ma Manga. Uh, I could call yeah. Manga Studio. Uh, uh, Clip Studio Pro has got some amazing, some amazing tools. The 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 rulers. There's oh. the the rulers. Being able to do <laughs> the rulers oh. are just amazing. Yeah, but then you can just fall down the rabbit hole. And then, and then you fall down the rabbit hole, and the next thing you know, perspective. It's yeah. just one here's, panel. Here's the trick with not falling down the rabbit hole with the perspective rulers and stuff, first thing you do is quick sketch out what you want that panel to be. Yeah. And only then do you use the rulers to tighten that sketch down. Yeah. And not adding all kinds of embellishment, just take that initial layout you had in mind and tighten it so it's crisp and clean, mm -hmm. and that's all. The, the advantage of, of Clip Studio Pro is that it was designed for comics creation. Photoshop was is is for photo manipulation, hence the name Photoshop. Uh, in fact, the very first thing that it was ever used for was to composite uh, 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 animation in um, for the movie The Abyss at ILM. So it's it's a photo manipulation program that just happens to have these tools that are applicable to comics creation. Manga Studio, especially for inking, was yes. is is designed specifically for. And, and also uh, doing half toning and things like that. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it was designed for that. So it's a great program for that. It's relatively inexpensive. It comes in two different levels. Uh, and, the, and the lower level has got all of the drawing engine tools and everything. So you can see if you really want it before you go up to the, to the upper level. And the, it's not that expensive. It's really not. Honestly, the, the, the high end is $300. Level, if that, if you follow their Twitter account, there are almost always Smith sales. Micro off, offers sales on that, all and their the animation time. software too, all the time. It's as really well. good. So we we got a copy of the full Clip Studio program for like hundred and twenty dollars. Compare that with how long you'd have to pay monthly for the Photoshop, and it makes a difference real quick. Yeah, that's that's two months of Photoshop. By yeah. the way. Uh, so the other thing is that don't necessarily think. My comic isn't going to be good unless I spend hundreds of dollars sure. on it. And when it comes down to it, the most popular comic on the internet is a stick figure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, when it comes down to it, it's just your idea. And and I've I've had times when I've had to take I could, didn't have my scanner, so I've taken a picture of my sketch with my phone, and I've worked with that. So when it comes down to it, get your idea. Put it in some sort of form that people can They're just tools. These yeah. are just tools. That's all they are. Uh, and there are there are all kind. There's always going to be an alternative. You could you could go and download GIMP uh, for free. Granted, it's not. It, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. And some people will say, well, it doesn't feel like Photoshop. No, because it's not Photoshop. But it it works. Uh, like Guy Gilchrist, who I work with on on Nancy, Random Acts of Nancy, who. Um, uh, was the original artist for, for Muppets comic strip and Muppet Babies, created Muppet Babies and, and co-created uh, Fraggle Rock. Uh, he, he, that's what he uses, he uses GIMP. Now he draws everything traditionally, but to create his scans and, and to upload and to prepare it, he uses GIMP because he doesn't need Photoshop. So it just depends on what works for you. Um, and you know, and Photoshop is pretty, Pricing. Uh, Adobe just really. Shall we to take Adobe. another question? Yeah, before we start on Adobe. Over here. Rant. Yeah. Uh, thank you for talking about the technical side. I really do appreciate that. Oh, hold on, microphone's coming. 
There we go. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to ask is, so when you're first starting out, you know, posting onto your own website can be very difficult and won't really get much traffic. So what would be some sites you would recommend to get a lot of people looking at your comments and get a lot of feedback in your first beginning? Well, so any social media. Yeah, any social media. social media. Tumblr is great. Tumblr is great. Um, and I, I think the best response to any question about where should I be posting about my comic is everywhere. Mm. Any place you can be, anywhere you can go, go there and talk about it. Because you don't necessarily know who your audience is going to be right away. Put some panels of it on Instagram and have a link to your site. You know, the social media stuff is about getting people to the main feed. And the main feed may be Tumblr. A lot of things like Yale Stewart, who does uh, JLA, the main site was Tumblr for a long, There's long time. There's a lot time. of people who use Tumblr. So, I, you know, just as long as you get people um, where you need them to be, always make sure there's a link, get them excited, bring them where they need to go. Push share buttons on the share site. There you go. All the share, share buttons. Make it easy for somebody to be like, yeah. oh my god, this is funny. My, make it my difficult for them not to share it. Yeah. Okay. Right? Just because the only thing better than you talking about it everywhere is other people talking about it everywhere. <coughs> we, we put a, a Reddit button on the website and and it's very few times that somebody will, will share it on, click that share button on Reddit, but when they do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but always put, put the URL back on, because the worst feeling is if a comic explodes and there's no information on how to get back to your website. That it gets shared and it gets sent out there and everybody goes, oh, this is hilarious, and there's no way for them to find the rest of your work. So, so put that, that URL in there. Uh, so, on the subject of funding related to the, the online available tools, uh, you're talking about ad revenue. How do our SS feeds uh, interact with, say, ad revenue where people get the, for example, the entire comic email? Yeah. Um, basically, I don't have an RSS feed. I just have uh, Google ads on my site. Um, I really don't rely much on ad revenue for to keep County Health going. I rely on patrons, um, which I've been doing since 2001. That's the uh, revenue stream that does keep it going. Uh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know RSS feeds either. Uh, never have. Um, I always found them, to me personally, kind of cumbersome to use. So I, I never I filled around with it way back when before even so but it never really it would always seem to me kind of more of a, a solution in search of a problem Good so question. you try it out and get back with us yeah. Yeah. So, so and then next year you get up here and you yeah. explain oh, yeah. what you did so I so I use patreon um, and one of the levels level number one one dollar thank you very much level two three dollars I will send a URL that will take out all the advertisements on the site and for three dollars a person i can afford to go here's where you can read it with no advertisements and it'll load a lot faster archive binge makes it faster and so as far as i mean i'm assuming that your your concern is that if people are using rss feed then that takes away from their ad revenue and so it's a way to offset that that cost um and so yeah the the way to yeah, well yeah, I, I, I want to just to, just to build on what you were saying is if you can do get people to pay you not to see advertising people will uh, because I've uh, several services and these are not web comic services but, but like like for example YouTube Red it is so worth it to me to pay eight dollars a month not to sit through a video every time I click on something on YouTube uh, so and and what I and I still like it because the the people who are monetizing their videos still get their monetization out of me they're just getting it out of that eight dollars a month I just don't have to sit through ads that uh, so why are you showing me this ad uh, again again and again and again and it's the same ad 30 times uh, so uh, patreon is a great way of, of, of being able to do that because you can you can feed things out exclusively to your uh, to your patrons and that kind of acts like an RSS feed in a way that they're paying for to get exclusive access uh, get it, get it early. Get it, get it ex uh, exclusive content. Uh, get, like you said, special links so that you get discounts on merchandise or, 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 or um, uh, 
ad free on the site or whatever. Uh, that's a great way of doing that, and in turn, still handle the, uh, get you the monetization that you need in order to you know, keep things going. Any other questions? Uh, so I had a question more from the art side, and I know there's no way I'm the only person with this problem, but when I'm trying to draw something, it varies in degrees, but on most occasions, I would literally rather die than draw a background. <laughs> Heads, hands, and feet. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Um, I would rather draw a thousand hands than a single tree. Um, <laughs> so my question is either, A, how do you trick yourself into not despising every second of drawing a background, or how do you get away with not doing it without looking lazy? Um, there's a difference between a small format comic strip and the large format that you work in. Yeah. One of the great advantages of the small format is you can get away with as little background as you want. You could literally have just a figure talking to another figure with no background at all. None of us are ever going to be as rich as Jim Davis. His background is just yeah. Davis. The Garfield. Oh, Garfield, Davis. I'm sorry. Well, Jack Davis had great backgrounds yeah. too. My, my I'm talking about the guy who has no background. Oh, okay. He has a you're horizontal right. Line. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's his background. And sometimes it's a full, yeah, foreground. Yeah. Too. And we'll never be as rich as he as he he will, and because he's a multi-billionaire or something, he's never drawn a background. So. That's the difference between comic strips and the large format. Now there are still tricks with larger format works. Um, the establishing shot is the panel on the page or the panel in the scene that establishes where we are right now. It gives us the who, what, when, where, and why of the moment so that the reader is in one panel caught up with exactly where we are, who is there, what are they doing, and why do we care. And then we can follow and read the rest of that scene. Now, if you do a good enough establishing shot up front, you can go essentially backgroundless for many panels <laughs> after that, and the audience remembers. You just have to keep putting in new establishing shots, uh, either pay, every page if you're doing it that way, or if you're doing like the endless scroll style comics, then think of it like every five or six rows of panels. You need another establishing shot because your audience are children and they will wander into traffic if you don't take their hand and walk them where they're stopping. Now, just really quick, artists, I know you don't like drawing backgrounds, and this is for everybody. I have to do backgrounds all the time. Do I love it? No, I do Nobody not. Does. But you gotta do it, and the more you do it, the easier it will be. Just like drawing faces, drawing hands, drawing whatever. It is the repetition that makes you better. It's the time that you put in is the work and the skill that comes out. What I have said for a very long time is that an artist is not defined by how well they draw the stuff they love drawing. An artist is defined by how well they draw the stuff they hate drawing. Because anybody can just doodle in their sketchbook all day for fun. But this is a real job. And you have to treat it like a real job. You have to be professional that way. And I really admire the people who can get in there and make those amazing backgrounds. Because God bless them. I, what, what, yeah, what, I, what, I hate crowd, crowd shots where there's a lot of... So what I'll do, just to decide that force myself to do it, is throw in little jokes. Like these characters over here, they're the Three Stooges, or these are the or, or Alfred e. Newman's over here, or or and just just throw in little little get just for you, just to keep your interest up, and and you know if, and see if some, see if anybody notices. We'll use friends of ours, people we yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Put in crowd shots. Actually, this could be something you open up as a patron tier, pledge this month, and we'll put you in a background shot. Or, or and, and different tiers, you can actually put them in as not just in the background, yeah, yeah. a character, a walk-on, a, 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 a speaking role, How whatever. How would you like to die in this issue? <laughs> I mean, it costs more, it costs more than costs more to die. It costs yeah. way more to die. You only yeah. get to die once. Yeah. <laughs> Unless this is a zombie book, in which case, more yeah. marbles. Other questions? <laughs> oh. I 
I had a professor at college because I was a, I went to, I have a degree in comic books. <laughs> I went to Savannah College for Art Design and I have a sequential art degree. It's like Portland East, isn't it? Oh, no, it's deep south, deep south. Deep south. Deep south. Deep south. Deep south. So, so I had a professor who said, uh, you got to approach the detail and so the page, like, uh, like filet mignon and potatoes that you don't want to eat, eat an entire dinner of just filet, I kind of do. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, need, you, need this, you need that simple basic to kind of cleanse the palate. So if you have an entire page of nothing but intense detail, your eye is just going to glaze over, it's all going to turn gray. You need some somewhere for the eye to rest. You need that really simple. In, in, in uh, manga, you have really, really simple, and then if they look at something, that's the detail comes in. If they look at the sword, then suddenly it's this gem encrusted. But other than that, it's you know very basic. So in, with backgrounds, you got the one that's the yeah. detailed background, and then yeah, everything else is just. John Frank Lucy does the same thing. You don't really see the boogers <laughs> until the close up. Until, until the close up. So. <laughs> and then you get the foghorn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Over here. One of the things that hasn't been talked about yet is the almost immediate feedback that you get from the fans on electronic format. What are some of the highs and lows that you all have had from that immediate feedback? As Everybody looks you, over at Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That, that fear keeps me from being too lazy. I have gotten a lot better. I'm trying to remember, we didn't have as much feedback in the beginning because nobody really knew what webcomics were. And now, oh my god, everyone has an opinion. Um, so I will actually go and I will Google something. I will make sure that I have the right spelling, the right phrasing, the right what the thing looks like. Um, I will make sure that the, 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 the hole is on the right side, that the handle is in the right place, because people will let me know. You know, you, you know Weird Al's song, Word Crimes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing is, unfortunately, if you make an honest mistake, you have somebody who goes, hey, did you notice that you made this mistake? And you're like, oh my god, yeah, that's... And then somebody won't read the comments, and somebody, and you got 12 people. And they all think they're the ones who discover they think they're the yeah. first one. Yeah. Um, and, and on the reverse side, uh, if you do the research, I did one where I'm climbing a stack of paperwork because I'm trying to buy a house, and it's just this entire, and I wanted a reference of climbing. And so I, I looked on that. Google image search is your friend, and sometimes it's a horrible place. Um, and so I, I did the comic based on, I did the, the illustration based on that. I didn't realize I had drawn climbing shoes, and I had all these people go, you climb, what kind, what do you climb, what do you do? And it became this like, it kind of went a little bit viral in the climbing community. And so that can help and hinder you, as far as making sure that you research enough before you post it. So you don't have somebody who goes, well, well, actually, actually, that's not the exact. Well, it goes the other way too, though, because you never know who is going to be really happy to see that detail brought to life. Um, you know, people who have backgrounds involving these little things that are just incidental moments in your comic, but because you got that detail right, suddenly your comic is one of their favorites. Right. Because nobody gets that thing right. Now for us, uh, a lot of times we get like emails, like four in the morning emails, where somebody, because a lot of people can just get a whole big omnibus of uh, rainbow, like either on Comixology or from us, uh, you know, at a con or whatever. And we get like, uh, we had this email up from a girl once who read it and was like, oh my God, this is my favorite book ever. Like it, the main love story is about two girls. And she's like, I just came out yesterday and I bought this book and this book is so meaningful to me right now in this moment. I Words cannot describe it. And we get this long, awesome email. And that is the other thing that you can get. So it's not just the nitpicky things. It's the amazing, in the moment, emotional reactions that make you feel like, yeah, that's why I do this. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people talk about the internet in terms of the knee-jerk reactionaries, but sometimes you get knee-jerk love that is really nice to receive. Yeah, yeah I just had, um, and Kevin and Kel this past week, too, minor characters uh, broke up the relationship and 
I was surprised at the Kevin and Kel site's comment section. Hundreds of comments commenting about these characters. People had become invested in them. And they were, I said minor characters, they weren't you know, the major characters, but people were, got emotional over them. Um, kind of that's kind of what we hope for. But it can also be a curse. It could. All it's two sides of the same coin. All I have to say is Danielle. Yeah, that too. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, that, that too. It was through Kevin and Kelly I first heard the term trigger warning. <laughs> Just to leave that there. Yeah. So, so you've got to. Sometimes you have to separate yourself uh, from from the fans, from the work. You have to recognize that sometimes they're not talking about you. You're going to get a troll. You're going to get somebody who says you suck. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And and you're going to get somebody who just kind of s just smears something all over your comment section. And and go ahead and I'll I'll read something and I'll go. Oh, sweetie, you're having issues. <laughs> this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> that that it. it they're just they're just finding somewhere to vent, and you have the biggest soapbox that they can get and jump on right then. Um, or they'll say, "Well, I didn't agree with what you did with this character. I didn't. You you didn't write that right. You're not writing the story right. You have to go. Somebody has to. What one writer somebody said somebody should kidnap her kid and make her write it the way it should be written. <laughs> yeah. You don't really read the script, do you, buddy? I know. Well, it, well, it, so so when some people. When somebody emails you or comments and they go, well, you know, I like your stuff, but this part just, you didn't, you know, it's not, I don't like it. I kind of have to step back and go, well, you are entitled to your opinion, and I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Um, yeah, I kind of, you, you have to pace yourself in, as far as what you're willing to change, how much you're willing to give up to because that way can lie, lie madness. If you're like, oh, okay, they wanted the character to go this way, I'll go this way. Or, oh, they thought it should go this way, I'll go this way. And, and, it, and it can become, I, I have a friend that she, her readers kind of wore her down and she didn't want to do it anymore. And she ended it, she walked away. She just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Because they kept yelling at her about how she was doing it wrong or she should have done it differently. So, so yeah, put it out there, listen to your fans, uh, listen to the readers, and, and, and take the feedback, because that can affect how you develop a character. That can affect how, you know, the, the insight they have, you're like, oh, that's, ooh, I didn't even think of it that way. And Good you artist copy, great artist steal. <laughs> okay. but, but put up a little buffer as far as, as how much you're willing to let them hurt you. You've got to believe in yourself to do this because the rest of the world doesn't, basically. Your parents won't. Mom. <laughs> if you're working with another person, uh, um, if, so you're starting out, and you like drawing, and your best friend has a writing idea, and you're going to work together in high school, or in college, or the, you know, so your, your sibling, or your best friend, um, write up a quick contract. Just write down, hey, Contracts this is keep friends thing. friends. Oh, God. Because life is long. Things happen, things change. And so are memories. One of you will be way more invested in it than the other. One of you might put down a payment for a printing, or put down the money for the hotel room, for the convention, for the table. And the other one might decide they're going to wander the convention, and they'll wander back to the table and go, so how much did we make? And I get 50% of that. Well, yeah, but you have to pay me back for the hotel and the table and the food and the gas money. and the... so, so I mean, just put it up front, write it down. Make sure you know who owns the property, who can use the property. We used a marriage contract. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, I mean. <laughs> although my husband hasn't finished signing the, re the release form that I gave him seven years ago. So it's really slow. I also, I also changed his name in the comics. So uh, we, have, we have time for one more question. Hello.
Oh, yes. So I'm a strong believer that uh, a mentor will definitely get you in the right direction. Uh, the five of you are great at what you do. Um, but the closer to the end game that you can find someone doing this, what you want to do, I believe the more successful you can be. Uh, I do have a webcomic I want to begin in the realm of music. Amongst your social friends, uh, who do you know that is doing what you're doing, specifically in the context of music and entertainment? Well, we do a whole comic that uses music as a motif. Yeah, Rainbow in the Dark is like a rock opera comic. The point was to try and bring the musical field into comics. Uh, music is a tough thing, but the way that we dealt with it is that, uh, you know, as the characters go from black and white into color. And just periodically and through periodically. the dialogue, we worked song lyrics into the dialogue. Um, because when I'm talking to somebody and they say something that reminds me of words from the song, I get that song in my head real strong. So we wanted to try and create a subliminal soundtrack and give people music while they read a book and see if that could cross over that silent medium. Uh, I don't do anything with music because I, um, well, when I was in high school, they passed ordinances in my town to keep me from playing my saxophone. <laughs> so, uh, but more important thing I think that you mentioned was about a mentor and uh, someone who, can, who has been there, has been in the trenches, to give you encouragement, and help you find those uh, the landmines before you step on them. Uh, I mean, mine is right up here on this table, and it's Bill Holbrook. It's not. A yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I started doing a web comic, and I advertised on Kevin and Kel, I, and 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 my uh, uh, readership went through the roof to the point that it actually knocked my web server off the air. This is back in those days when you could do that, and uh, and I met with Bill. Bill and I became friends, and Bill's been a, a big encouragement. He encouraged me to join first the Southeast chapter of the National Cartoonist Society, then helped me get into the National Cartoonist Society itself, uh, I, I, and, and then let me publish his books for a few years. Uh, I, I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be doing Nancy and doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for Bill. Uh, so thank you, Bill. Well, you're welcome. Uh, thank, uh, you. Or thank you, Bill. Well, thank uh, you for. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but he bought money to advertise on my site, so thank you. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, find, uh, if you're interested in doing a webcomic, w whether it's someone that, uh, doing a webcomic in your area or not, it's a good idea, webcomics that you like, get in contact with, those, with, the, with the, the creator of it and explain to them that you're interested in it. And, and because we all love people saying, I love your comic, you've helped, you've inspired me. And, and picking our brains. We love talking shop about stuff. And conventions are a great place to do it too because you've got a lot of creators in a confined space and they can't run away. And <laughs> you can see if they're ignoring yeah, the especially, message. Especially, especially, especially if they're in between two because they're kind of trapped on both sides. Yeah. So, so bring your portfolio, talk to the people, and, yeah. and get feedback. They're, we're happy to do it. We wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for because, guys yeah, because at conventions who are willing to look at our stuff and tell us in which manner we suck and, and we love to do it. And we love our medium. And we love, and love it when someone's interested enough to want to get into it. Uh, poor dumb fluffy bunnies they may be. Yeah. Uh, we do love that. So go to meetups. Go, go to where your peers are. Other people who are trying to start a comic, start a web comic, already did a comic. Atlanta has a huge amount of comic meetups. Um, go to forums, but but mostly you know go to the coffee shops and say post somewhere and say hey guys, anybody doing artwork and stuff, let's all meet up at a coffee shop and suffer together. Um, we are all in the. Yeah. In the artist alley. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are. Okay, the artist yeah. alley is in the Americas Mart. Building the, two, outer floor, Mongolia. Floor three. There is more than one floor on the Americas Mart. We're on the third, third floor, floor. Third floor. Um, and I'm on aisle K. We're on. Uh, we're all. Uh, we're all on the three we're of us are yeah. right across from each other. Fine, I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> we are all on. There's two sides, yeah. and I think it's so important. Yeah, there's one yeah. side of the hall that has a bunch of stand-up arcade games. We're on the opposite side. Yeah. 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 So yeah. all of us, and we're all across from each other. Yeah. So if you all swing a dead cat, you'll hit all of us. Clutch. <laughs> yeah. Except me. You got to throw Jenny. the dead cat. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> section H non-video game side, and then Jenny's in section I. K. 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 Non-video game yeah. side. Non-video game side. So all on Sans video game side. Yeah. And, and if you have any more questions, send us emails. 
Yeah. Or come by our tables. Yes, we're here yeah. all day tomorrow for yeah. as long as it's open. Uh, ten to five. Ten to five. Ten to five. So there you Cheers. go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.